come back home this weekend after having two weeks on the road. It's family weekend on campus, so our student body has a chance to have their families, their parents on campus for the weekend. There's a lot of activities going on throughout the campus, which ought to add to the atmosphere of our campus life. You know, we have a big weekend in Zips Athletics with our, our men's and women's soccer teams playing home this weekend, men's soccer. Um, Western Michigan on Saturday night, women's soccer plays on Friday and Sunday. Our swimming team is home on Saturday. Our volleyball team is home on Friday and Saturday, and our rifle team is home. And uh, as long as they're not taking aim at us, I'm good with that. And uh, so it's a good big weekend for Zips Athletics, and we're looking forward to coming back home. I know our team is looking forward to playing at home. We're playing a very good Western Michigan team, um, and uh, who I thought played a terrific game at, in South Bend, Indiana last week, and is well coached, and, and we'll certainly have uh, our work cut out for us, but uh, we're focusing on ourselves to get better, and uh, I thought we made some good strides in that area yesterday. And with that being said, I'll open it up for questions. Tom Gaffney, Akron Peak Journal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I, I'm not Helen Thomas for the first question. I don't know what to say. Uh, Moorfield, uh, just to get that out of the way, I mean, did he tell you why he left? He text messaged his right. uh, position coach. Uh, did he say he never, why? Uh, no, nope, he just told him he was done. Never came in to see me, uh, never had a conversation with me. And uh, you know, sometimes when you have adversity, some people can't handle that very well. And um, the unfortunate thing is that I could have probably used that scholarship for someone else, and I thought it was the best thing to do to give it to LeVon. And, um, and I don't think he's um, – so that's just – we move on. Now you said that like there will be some jobs open, perhaps. Then, I mean, what, do, what do you see as the biggest areas of well, I think uh, concern on, on the team? On a, well, on our team, position, you get better through competition. That's how people get better. And obviously, with some of our numbers, we can create competition at positions, Tom. And in some positions, we can't create as much competition at. Uh, but we're going to create competition at every position that we can this week. And if someone practices better and beats somebody out there in this week, because we're going to have a very competitive week of practice, um, then that person might get an opportunity, you know, whether it be in the secondary or on the offensive line or at the receiver position. I think those are positions probably have the most numbers to, to have that kind of you know, open competition. You're burning any red shirts on this? We are, we are not going to pull anybody out of red shirts. Um, we, we don't have a plan to pull anybody out of a red shirt at this time that's not already planned. That's 10 guys you uh, I believe it's, it's, it's 10, right? Nine true freshmen and, and McCluskey. Western, I mean, what do you, you know, the quarterback they, 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 um, maybe. quarterback's playing really well. Uh, Car Carter's playing, Car Carter is playing really well. They, they have, you know, three 50-year senior offensive linemen. Nunez is a senior receiver. Um, they throw the ball extremely well. Uh, they have a good plan in how they're attacking defenses every week. Um, sort of very well coached, um, and, and they, they methodically go about their business on offense and do a really good job with that. Uh, defense, they're a little younger, um, but, they, but they have an, a Paul Hazel, number 99, is an excellent pass rusher. He's, he's a guy that will have to be aware of. He had a couple sacks out. He leads your team in sacks, five and a half sacks. Um, he's, he's a very good player. And um, they're able to play almost a nickel defense without going to nickel because Jamal Berry, who was a safety, now is a linebacker. And uh, so he's a, it allows them a little bit more flexibility with their defensive package as they go through. But what I see from them is a team that's, you know, believes they can win. They went into Notre Dame Stadium and didn't die, you know, didn't shy away from from that environment. And uh, and that's it, you know has guys that can make plays, and they're also not afraid to uh, take chances, whether it be a you know different formation on offense, spreading you out, a fake field goal which they ran against, you know, Ball State. Um, they've run an onside kick against Toledo, surprise onside. So they've done some things in the kicking game, too, that have to keep you on your toes as you go about, about your business. Uh, on paper, anyway, I haven't seen any yeah. Western Michigan, but obviously uh, you've struggled defending the pass, and they, they pass it a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, they, so I really think they're going to come out this week and run it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Northern tried that strategy on you where they changed up on you. But um, <clears throat> so I mean, I don't know what I guess. What can you do about that? Or well, just we just keep continue to keep trying to improve our pass defense every week. <clears throat> That's what we try to do. And uh, uh, you know, our four down defensive linemen 
have to do a great job of trying to get pressure on the quarterback so we're not having to you know, bring, bring pressure from other places. Um, and it's just something we're continuing to work on. And, uh, um, and we're, we're, we are working progress in an area. We've made progress. We had you know interception last week. We had a take away in the past game, Anthony Holmes. Um, so we just got to continue to have, make progress in that area as, as we go through. I mean, it looks like at least on the numbers, the quarterback, their quarterback runs pretty well too. Is he does. Right? He does run the ball, and they will have. He will scramble out of the pocket, and he will also have some called runs. Yeah, they're very, very good offensive team. Rob, one thing from that I'm, I don't know if the nice surprise, whatever the development of Paul is the tight end. He had some two big catches against Kent State. He had a couple against Ohio. Will we see a lot more of him in the? Yeah, he's our starting game? tight end, um, and. Uh, my anticipation is he'll be our starting tight end for the rest of the season. And he's done a very nice job. In the last two weeks, you know, when you, when you, when you look at, at the team and you're looking at guys improving and looking at guys getting better, you can point to a guy like Richard Hall and say, he's really improving. Okay, he's really doing a nice job out there. And, uh, you know, he's taken every snap at tight end in the last two weeks in the game and done a nice job with that. And uh, he, he's got plenty to work on, plenty to improve, but, but he's um, – he is identifying what those are with, with John Latina and, and, and working at that. We talked about him last week. <clears throat> I mean, your intent when you recruited him and brought him here was to be a defensive player. I mean, with that, and that's what he was in high school, and he was all state and all that mm -hmm. sort of thing. And, and you just needed <clears throat> tight ends. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we, we um, uh, previously, that. Akron had run a spread offense, right? So where tight ends and fullbacks weren't as prevalent. Um, you know, so in this recruiting class, we were able to recruit Austin Bailey and Anthony Ritosa, who's redshirting. And uh, Anthony came in a little bit on the you know, lean side, so Anthony really needs that redshirt here. Um, so as we looked at the practice field and in the early in training camp, I was looking around and I, you know, knew at that time our tight ends were, um, you know, we, we, we needed some help over there, tight end. So we were looking for candidates. And at the same time, I moved a couple of guys to the linebacker, too. I did that during that time. Um, you know, so we did a few different things. It's a couple of positions that I thought um, it, it, was, it was warranted. Mm -hmm. uh, at receiver, now, uh, how long is Jeremy? I mean, do you envision him back or not? I do. He will be back. Oh, he will be in like, Miami? He, he will be Miami? back. Yeah, I'm not sure. It could be earlier than that. could be later than that. I mean, it could be around that time. Um, we'll have a really better opinion of him next week of, of where he's progressing, but his rehab is progressing fine. He definitely will be back, um, and, and the, the timetable is yet to be determined. Now how tough is it then? Because they held Jaleel and two freshmen, and then Gary got dinged up. His Gary dinged up his ankle. Yeah. I mean, how tough is it? You just, you just go on. You just, you just go on. I thought Antoine Russell did some nice things. Um, Keith Scania's had a couple catches, uh, and... Uh, you know, Gary had had some stuff, the tight ends. You know, we, we, we did some things on offense. I mean, I think those guys are just going to have to continue to grow and get better. That's all. It's, it's You get injuries during the course of a football season. What's and, the, and so you just have to react to it. I'm 